our story has remained with us and affected our lives in many ways. Aww. Fantastic, that's so, that's incredible. Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland. I'm Steph. And I'm Lee. Today it's a video a little bit different because we're gonna do an interview. We're gonna interview some very special people. Hi there, we're uh, Alec and Jan Foreman. Hello Jan, hello Alec. In 1977 to, through to 78, we drove in a Series 3 Land Rover. How many countries? 29, 40,000 miles in Europe, Africa and Asia. Born and brought up on a farm in the Midlands in England. Well, early teens, I had an interest in doing different things, going into rock climbing and hill walking. And I wanted to train as a, a mechanic. I saw an advertisement in a, ma in a TV magazine for the army. And I thought, well, that looks interesting. Three weeks later, I was in the army, signed up for nine years. Because of my interest in mechanics, I signed up for, to be a vehicle vehicle mechanic, you know, look after tanks and Land Rovers and so on. But when I finished the first bit of the training, transferred onto the uh, aircraft course and trained on helicopters and, and a friend said, oh, you're up for posting. I said, where to? He says, Hong Kong. Spent two and a half years there, traveled down to Indonesia and Australia. So I was uh, <clears throat> brought up in Essex. This is east of London. I was into horse riding. I had my own horse. There came a point when uh, my first job, I was working in a hospital laboratory. The part I enjoyed most was visiting the patients in the ward. So I thought maybe I should go and be a nurse. I think one of my uncles, he suggested that maybe I could join the army. And so I signed up to train to be a nurse in the army. And I signed up for four years. In the third year of my training, I went to, to Germany. And by this time, Alec had been posted from Hong Kong to Germany. We met, yeah, in, in the NAFI, NAFI club. The Navy Army and Air Force Institutes. Yeah, it's like the social. Obviously, you, you've met now and uh, you were in the army together. Planning the journey that, that you did together, it's always interested me as to where you found your inspiration. I put ourselves in the same position and it, it was easy. I wondered, is it possible to drive our car around the world? I got on the internet and I Googled it. I watched some YouTube videos. I found my inspiration. I guess the very first in inspiration to travel actually came from my mother and she was in the, uh, the women's army during the second world war and she was a radar operator and she used to tell me all the stories of things she got up to my introduction to land rovers was during the army we were planning with another guy we were going to drive back from hong kong back to uk it never happened okay um, but that was still there this desire to do something with okay. a Land Rover. He suggested it to me and uh, well, I guess, you know, I had a bit of a taste of travel. I was in Germany and I'd done a little bit in Europe and I thought he was pretty cool. So I thought, ah. I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna go with this idea. How did you choose the route? Quite familiar with Europe, close to Africa. So, well, let's go down through Africa, through the Sahara and make our way to Kenya and then ship to India and then come back to England, which is what the plan was originally. You guys took the central route, which I believe is, it's not really possible anymore. Down through the desert, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's not a good thing to do these days. It's just yeah. amazing. You guys got to experience something uh, which, you know, is no longer possible. Or We ended up uh, driving through the desert twice because once we got down to Cameroon, uh, they were fighting in Zaire, as it was then. And the border between Kenya and Tanzania was closed. So it didn't seem wise to continue on to Kenya. So we thought we'd go around West Africa and then back up through the desert to Europe and then go out to India from there. We always monitor a political situation through internet but for you how did you manage that talking to other people who were traveling as well really that was yeah. the only way now. wasn't it we went to the british embassy in yaoundi to get their advice they said 
you need to be aware of this, this and this. And uh, we thought, well, there's no point in going to troubled areas. We haven't seen West Africa. Let's do that instead. Did you use paper maps to find your route? Oh, yes. <laughs> West Africa. This is the one original? of the actual maps you used on the journey? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bartholomew maps for the uh, Asia route. This is our GPS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fantastic. This is my GPS. That's our GPS. <laughs> Land Rover was the obvious choice, but was there any other vehicle type considered or was it always going to be Land Rover? That's it. Always going to be a Land Rover. And when we decided we we're going to do the trip, we started looking around for a vehicle and we decided we'd buy my uncle's Land Rover, which he'd had for a couple of years. He bought it brand new, used it for two years to carry around pigs and potatoes. And when we bought it, we spent a couple of days getting rid of this agricultural smell and, and then um, spent several weeks doing the conversion, putting a pop-up roof built in water tanks, an extra fuel tank. Compared with your vehicle, it was really quite basic. Water filtration system. Now it's so fancy with like UV light. We had the water in three separate plastic jerry cans, which was sort of down in the bilges, and was filtered through a charcoal filter. Any right. solar panels? <laughs> no solar panels, no shower. We've got it too easy. I wish I could go back in the 70s. Maybe just for six months. Money, currencies, like what did you do? We decided to do the trip. And then we had the opportunity to go and work in Oman. That pay was really good. So in six months, we earned enough to finance our trip. We were going knowing we had still some money in the bank if we got put in jail or something. <laughs> <laughs> got a plan for these things. Taking on the actual journey, we had to buy traveler's checks. And then we also took quite a bit of American dollars. I'm sure we had some pounds and that, and we just kept French franc. We just had, took a selection of uh, cash. We had a secret place in the Land Rover, which yep. was not obvious. I've seen some of your photos and they are very beautiful. And I was quite surprised about the, the quality. Do you remember what camera did you use? Olympus Trip 35, 28 rolls of film. You know, we kept them in a sealed box. During our journey from Afghanistan and in India and Nepal, we traveled with a Swiss couple. They had their Land Rover. And the reason for that is when you went across Afghanistan, you couldn't go alone. You had to go in convoy. And okay. so we teamed up with them. When we were in Nepal, it was time for us to start making our way back to England. But they had different plans. They were staying on. Well, we didn't exchange any address, nothing and they, they didn't have anywhere because they were with their Land Rover. You know, there was no way of keeping contact. And so we thought, okay, that's that. Just after we published our book in 2014, we went to a Land Rover meetup in Switzerland and we got talking with some of the, the people there and said, I wonder if we could track down where this couple are. Well, one of the uh, Swiss guys did indeed make inquiries and found the address and so on of this couple. Well, I, you know, wrote a handwritten letter and we sent it off and we heard nothing. So during uh, this, the lockdown time, I suddenly thought I would try again and I'll send them a card. So I got one of these cards made up with all their photos in. They immediately wrote back. And they said, we want to see you, we want to meet up. And they arrived and it was just amazing to see them. We spent six hours sat oh, talking. Wow. And it just was amazing, just uh, incredible. And at the end of our time together, I handed them a copy of our book. There is countless acts of kindness and generosity that you experience on a journey like what you did. But is there anything that, that stands out? Several, but just one mm. I think of in India. John Luke, I'm sure, was an excellent teacher, but as far as mechanics was concerned, he knew where to put the fuel in. That was about the limit. When we got to Delhi, his brakes had failed. We went into uh, the Nehru Motor Market and found this store run by two Sikh brothers, and they specialised in seals with brakes and clutches and so on. 
they didn't import that model of Land Rover, so he couldn't look up in his book, you know, what we needed. He went through boxes comparing each seal and, uh, and finished up with a pile on the counter. And we said, you know, how much? He said, he said, your guests in my country, no charge. This is, uh, this is amazing. Well, another one, we were crossing the Sahara and we were on a track and we could see a guy with a, on a camel and we stopped and chatted and he asked if we had any food. So we gave him some biscuits. Water. And well, when he, Tea. he got off his camel <laughs> with a skin, camel skin bag, poured a couple of litres of camel's milk in a very grubby, sand encrusted bowl for us to drink. And then when we kind of parted, he suddenly got excited and said, you know, say, don't, don't go that way, go. He put his hand in the sand and kept saying, Sabo, Sabo. He was worried about the sand. I mean, we were in the desert, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, you know, go this way. And when we arrived in Agadez, which was the next major town, there's other overlanders with their vehicles. And they were all discussing this terrible area where there's all this soft sand in which they'd spent the day digging themselves out. And we realised it was in that spot where we'd met that guy. And if we hadn't met him, we'd have been in all that trouble. So just through meeting him. Saved you. Went out of his way to, to make sure you guys were gonna be on the right trail. People ask us a lot, what spare parts do you recommend I carry limited spare parts because as long as we can get towed to the closest town or village, if we have a problem, I can jump online, I can order a part. If we've had stuff delivered to the middle of Kyrgyzstan and it's there within a week, you know. Well, there's a company in London, Brown Church Components, they're still in business. They make roof racks and sand ladders. And we went to them and told them where we were going, decided on an amount we wanted to spend on it. And he said, oh, I'll put a kit together for you. And it was pretty good. We used pretty much most of them and we had this gasket kit, which had every seal, washer and O-ring for the whole engine, except when we were in Pakistan, got up in the morning, got checking the vehicle to get ready, started the engine up and water came out from everywhere under the, under the hood. This gasket kit had every seal and washer and O-ring except that one. Course. Murphy's Law. You've already mentioned several times your vehicle was a Land Rover Series 3. Series 3 hard top uh, with a six cylinder gasoline engine in, thirsty on fuel. And the reason we chose gas because, you know, a gasoline engine, you can fix it. My thinking was that, you know, you get a problem with the diesel, you've got a problem because everything's got to be so clean and so on. It was uh, manufactured in 1974. Where is that car now? We, we kept it. Uh, oh. Yes. Sadly, it's in our garden looking very sorry for itself. We used it for 15 years after our um, trip and it became the family car and we had four children to fit in and then we had to put a little caravan trailer on the back when we were going on trips. We had over the years, many times people would say, oh, you should write a book. Oh, you should write a book. Well, I wrote this book. It took four years to write. Strangers Like Angels with the Devil or Two to Boot. On our journey, I wrote everything down in a diary. This uh, little gonna diary you. here. And that's just all written in pencil. There came a time when I had a chance to actually um, write the book. First, I had to write the 14 months of diary entries into a bigger book. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, I just transferred because some of the writing was disappearing in the original notebooks. I'll just write it all by hand and the 14 months. And as I was doing that, of course, I was refreshing my mind yeah. as to the journey. Mm -hmm. And likewise with our, um, our photographs, the way we communicated with our parents was just through handwritten letters. And so again, with these letters, I, I typed those all out so I could include those. You know, I just wanted it that people would be on the journey with us. And that's what people often say. They say they feel like they're in the Land Rover with us. When you're writing a book, you want to have a title that uh, reflects something about the content. 
one of the major uh, impressions we had on our journey was the welcome that we had from people we didn't know. That's amazing and especially you mentioned just then Afghanistan. As you guys know we, we managed to get into Afghanistan and explore just a fraction of that country that you know we, we could get into uh, during these days but you guys had access to the whole country, is that correct? Yeah, we went across the central route from Herat to Kabul. When we talk about our favourite countries of the journey, Afghanistan would be the Asia one and Mali was the one in uh, Africa. Have you driven a uh, Series 3 with the leaf suspension? No, I've briefly driven, I've driven a Series 1 and a Series 2A, but I've never driven a Series 3. Watching your vehicle tackling some of those roads, there seemed a lot of sway in that coil spring suspension. The series is a bit stiffer. We've got airbags in our rear coils as well, which we, we can pressure up or deflate to stop a little bit of that sway. I had them down a little bit for the Bartang, um, just for the potholes. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about Explore More. I'm Charles, I'm, I'm uh, Alec and Jen's son. About the time that they brought out the book, uh, me being a designer and interested in website building and things, I could see an opportunity to build a mantra around their story, which the mantra for Explore More is explore more of the world, engage with others and embrace global cultures, which is exactly what they did on their trip in a very authentic way. They just went out to see the world, they engage with other overlanders and of course, embrace cultures, either um, helping out others or being invited into their homes. You know, the belief is, is that with travel, your mind is opened and your perspective of the world is enlightened, that we're all humans on one planet and we're all sharing the space. Explore more on Instagram and, and on our website, exploremore.com. There's plenty of content on there sharing about my parents' story, but also today's travelers. About two years ago, 2018, on Valentine's Day, uh, my parents kind of made a commitment that they would love their Land Rover back to life. Dad started to dismantle the Land Rover and get it prepared for the restoration phase. Again, on our website, there's a whole page dedicated to that, um, calling it Return of a Legend, because it's very much a legendary Land Rover within our family, but also has been to places that um, may be no longer accessible today. The intention with the restoration is to maybe one day take it to places it hasn't been before, but also very much so celebrate it at a Land Rover events and let people see it in person and maybe sit in the back of the Land Rover and read the book or something like that. Um, wow. The next adventure for the Land Rover itself, we are in the next few weeks hoping to move back to England. And have you decided on a, a workshop yet to do the work in the UK, in England? We've made some inquiries. We know very well how, uh, how in-depth and uh, comprehensive a project like this will be and time consuming and probably many, many years. They reckon 85% of all Land Rovers ever made are still in existence. Well, fantastic. All well, right. Thank yeah, you think, so uh, much for uh, this time. It has been very wonderful. Yeah, and um, a great honor. Yeah. Uh, we have to say that. It's an absolute honor yeah. to, to talk to you guys. Thank you very much for giving your time and showing your interest. So thank, thank, you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.